How do we monitor and troubleshoot transactions, especially in complex distributed systems? Is it with logs? Well, no. Is it with metrics? Nope. It's neither logs nor metrics, or to be more precise, it's neither of those two alone. We need more, we need distributed tracing. In the previous video, that one over there, we explored open telemetry. If you haven't seen that one, stop watching this video right away. Watch that one first because this one builds on top of it. In this one, we'll take a look at one specific implementation of open telemetry. We are going to explore open telemetry tracing with Yager. Now, Given that you are already familiar with open telemetry because you watched that video, right? I will not go into details explaining what tracing is. Instead, I'll jump straight into Yager. So, what is it? Well, Yager is an open source distributed tracing system and it is a project that was donated to Cloud Native Computing Foundation or CNCF. It helps us with quite a few things like monitoring distributed transactions, performance and latency optimization, root cause analysis, service dependency analysis, distributed context propagation, and so on and so forth. It's mouthful, I know. We'll see it in action soon. Actually, soon is not soon enough. Let's see it in action right away. So. The first thing I will do is deploy one of my applications and I'm going to do that by executing kubectl. I'm going to use customize and I want to enable Helm because my application has a database and I'm going to pipe that into the namespace production and apply whatever is defined in that output. The details are not important here. What matters is that I just deployed my application which is already instrumented with open telemetry the one we explored in the previous video that I already mentioned for the third time. So you must have watched it, right? By the way, the instructions how to reproduce everything I'm doing are in the gist and the link to the gist is down in the description. Let's take a short break because I need to tell you about something very different, completely different, yet somehow the same. Triaging issues often takes too much time. The problem is that when we have an issue in production, Time is luxury we do not have. And that's where Robusta comes in. It forwards alerts to Slack and MS Teams and it enhances them with additional information like logs from pods, metrics, uh, Kubernetes events, and so on and so forth. As a result, you can decide who should look at an issue right away, directly from your messaging app. Apart from being a great tool, Robusta is also the sponsor of this video, so please go and check it out. The link is in the description. Now let's get back to the main subject. Next, I will deploy an instance of Yager. I already have Yager operator running in my cluster, but only the operator, I did not deploy Yager itself, so I will do that easily by defining Yager uh, kind of a resource and so on and so forth. And then I'm going to pipe it to kubectl and deploy it into the namespace observability. And to be on the safe side, I'm going to output all Yagers from the observability namespace. And we can see that my Yager is up and running for 20 seconds now, which is awesome. So I have my application, which is instrumented with open telemetry, nothing specific to Yager, and I have Yager up and running in my cluster. And I can open Yager in my browser and see pretty colors, you know, web UI, but there is nothing in it because nothing is sending traces to Yager yet. That the last piece of the puzzle, I need to instruct my application with open telemetry traces to push them to Yager itself. So I have a patch for my deployment and that patch is located in customized overlay stateful DB Yager deployment patch YAML. It's mouthful a long address, but what does matter is that I have a patch for my deployment over there. It's not really only for Yager, but uh, it contains the last two lines are actually relevant here. I'm saying, telling my application, hey, there is an environment variable, Yager endpoint, and that's the address of Yager running in my cluster, internal address. And my application is already instructed, knows how to push open telemetry metrics 
to whichever address I specify, in this case, the one in that environment variable. I'm not showing you the code of the application itself because, again, we saw it in the previous video and you can explore the code yourself. This is more about how we can push stuff open telemetry to Yager and what we can do with Yager once the open telemetry is pushed there. Actually, I might show you code later. Who knows? We'll see. So I'm going to apply that patch by executing kubectl customize, enable helm, etc, 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 and pipe it to kubectl, etc, etc, etc. And then I have my patched application or definition of the application that sends, uh, what does it send? Yes, traces to Yager. Nothing really special so far, but let's take a look at Yager Web UI and see whether something is happening over there. And now I have two services in the left-hand menu and I'm going to select Silly Demo because that's the name of my application. Yager already detected it because traces are pushed to it and I'm going to click Find Traces and now you can see that there are traces. There are some network requests coming to my application. In this case, mostly because uh, there are health checks, but we're going to see real requests later. And you can see that Yager is detecting it and showing me information about the requests that are coming to the application. If I select one of those, I can see the duration of a request and uh, not much more. It's not really very interesting right now. There is a single request going there and now we can see it. And then there is another request going there. We can see it, it's all green, no issues, no fun. So let's spice it up a bit. So I said that I'm not going to show the code, but I changed my mind. I'm going to show you the code very quickly and it's in Go, but don't worry. I'm just uh, trying to demonstrate that this is really happening. Uh, you can use OpenTelemetry with any programming language or almost any. If it's not supported in your programming language, then there is something wrong with your language. Remember that. Anyways, I am initiating Tracer. Since my application is using Jin, to act as a web server library. I'm instrumenting that as well. I'm saying, hey, use Otelgen, which is OpenTelemetry uh, library that auto instruments all my requests coming in. So I do not need really to instrument anything myself except to say, hey, whenever any request comes in through Otelgen, uh, you will instrument it, right? Because that's a library. You just plug it in. I have some functions to help me with managing errors, uh, HTTP errors in this case. And in that function, I'm creating a new span that will record those errors because one trace can contain many, many different spans. That's kind of the point of distributed tracing that we have something being traced and then that tracing, that line of tracing contains one or more spans with it. And one of those spans is whenever I have an error, I want to record it. Uh, in this case, in Yager. We have another file. This is the one that has functions that we are going to use. That's the one that has a function that connects to the database because I want to make it a bit more complicated, even though it's very, very simple still. And in that one, I'm using yet another library to instrument my application uh, so that it can record also communication to the database. And I have some additional spans over there so that I can have even more information than I need. Again, not going, I don't know why I'm going through the code. Let's see it in action. Let's see what happens if I start sending real requests to this application. So I'm going to send a post request to store one of the videos through my application into the database and another post request to store a second record into the database. And then I'm going to retrieve all the videos from the application that retrieves it in turn from the database, right? Simple operations, nothing special. I just wanted to get generate some traffic. And now I'm going to retrieve the traces again to refresh, to get the fresh ones. And I can go to one of those uh, slash videos. You can see the address, right? For each request on which address it was requested, which is already very helpful by itself. And it was auto instrumented. And over there, I can see additional information. To be more precise, once I'm inside of the video get uh, span or trace, I can see that there was a request to the application itself. And then there was another request to the database that performed select operation. This already shows me much more information. I can see what is happening, where do requests go, where do they follow, how long do they last, whether there are some errors and so on and so forth. But this is still too simple. I want something that generates more information to show you more info in a simple setup 
because I'm not running the full system production system here. So what should I show? Yes, one of the functions I have in this application is to calculate Fibonacci numbers, and that's a loop, right? It goes into a loop, a loop, 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 until it gets the number it needs. So let's go through that one. Over there we have Fibonacci handler, that's the entry point for web requests, and we have uh, the invocation of the calculate Fibonacci function, which is in a closed loop, right? So the end of the function calls the function itself unless the number is already calculated. And in this case, in that case, it is exiting, right? So it's a loop. It calls itself until it finds the number it needs. So let me send the request to my application by executing curl, then the whole address, and I want to calculate Fibonacci for number 10. Simple one, and I got 55 as the output. I don't really care about Fibonacci numbers here, but I do care are traces. So let me go back to Yager and see what did I get, because this should have generated around 100 uh, loops within uh, the application itself, within a function. There we go, there is Fibonacci uh, function. We can see the requests over there, and there are 178 spans in that uh, function, that loop, right? So 178 times that function was invoked through a single HTTP request. And that's already more useful because now I can see how long did it take for each of the invocation of that function to execute, whether there are some bottlenecks and so on and so forth. I can also see additional information, like over there it says number three. That's because I instructed my code with additional labels that might or might not be useful when debugging and going through issues or simply network traffic. What else should I show? Yes, there are errors as well. We can capture errors. I already showed that through the code itself, but let's take a look at how we can see the errors in Yager itself. So I'm going to intentionally repeat a post command that will try to uh, what it will try to do, yes, it will generate an error because I cannot post the same video twice. Uh, that would violate uh, unique keys in the database. So let's see how I can create an error. So yet another curl-x post command to publish the same video that already exists in the database that will create an error. And let's take a look at what we'll get in Yager itself. And there we go. There is silly demo, video post, one of the many requests coming there, and we can see that there are two errors over there. Errors that is uh, going through at least two spans of the trace itself. So I can easily see which requests generate errors, uh, maybe not for all the requests, depending on how I configure open telemetry. Anyways, I can see which requests generate errors, what's happening, I can expect the labels, and so on and so forth. Now there is one thing that I did not show yet, uh, and that's how tracing works across multiple applications or multiple microservices. Everything I did so far was limited to one application connected to the database. That's already actually two applications, two services, but let's spice it up. Let me deploy yet another application and see whether we can follow traces entering one up, going to the other, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to deploy a new application with kubectl namespace production. I'm going to apply whatever is defined in pinger yager directory. And there we go. That's my second application running in that cluster. Now, what is special about this application is that it's extremely simple, actually. All it does is forward request to specify the address. So uh, I will send a request to one application, that application will contact the other application, a silly demo, and we'll explore what happens from the tracing perspective. Can we follow that request as it goes through the system? So CURL, pinger, et cetera, et cetera. I'm sending a request to the new app, and that app responded with this is silly demo version 113. That response does not come from Pinger itself, it comes from the second service. That means that the connection is working. So request entered one application and went to the other. That other maybe went to the database, maybe not. We'll see in the traces and then it returned back to me. So I'm going back to Yager Web UI. I'm going to filter services to see only the requests going to Pinger. There is only one request because that's what I did so far. And we can see that there are two spans 
over there. The request entered, as you can see from the ugly looking graph, to be honest, it entered the service called Pinger, and then from there on, it went to the second service called Silly Demo, and I can see that uh, none of them produced any errors. I can see how long it took for each request to complete, and so on and so forth. I can now follow requests entering my system and going throughout the whole system, which is a must when you're trying to debug issues because issues might not be where you think they are. They often are not, especially in distributed microservice-based systems. Okay, that's enough of a demo. You get the point. We instrument our applications with OpenTelemetry and then we instruct OpenTelemetry to push traces to Yager, and then we can follow our request. We can see what's going on and we can do a lot of really cool things. Actually, not cool things. You should not go to Yager, but you have to because you will have issues and this is how you see what's going on in your system, at least from the networking perspective. Now, the real question is, should you use OpenTelemetry and combine it with Yager? So, here's the question. Should you use OpenTelemetry and Yager? Actually, that's that's a bad question. That's a wrong question because those should be two separate questions. So let's go through them one by one. First one, should you use OpenTelemetry? Definitely, absolutely. Yes, there is no excuse not to use OpenTelemetry unless you're managing very, very, very small system. The main question here is not about OpenTelemetry. Use it, you must. The real question is, whether you should be sending traces to Yager or somewhere else. Is Yager the best solution as a collector and UI for open telemetry traces? It is certainly, almost not certainly, but likely the most known solution in the market right now, at least among self-managed solutions, but it might not be the best one. It is definitely good for exploring traces, but how can I put it? Actually, I cannot put it because I did not explore the alternatives yet. I will do that in one of the next videos if you tell me in the comments that you would like me to compare Yager with something else. And until then, you should start using Yager right away, even if it might not be the best solution there is. And I'm not going to reveal which solution is better yet. And that might be confusing. You might be saying, hey, wait a minute. I want you to tell me what to use, but you do not need to worry because first of all, Yager is great, if not the best, but there is more important thing I need to say, and that's that you cannot make a big mistake. The bulk of the work is in instrumenting your applications. That's where the real work lies, and that's where OpenTelemetry jumps in. You need to instrument your application with OpenTelemetry and that can take anything between hours and days or months or weeks or years. It can take any amount of time to instrument your application. But since you're using OpenTelemetry, it is very easy, almost no effort to switch from one end user application, not end user, one storage for your traces to another. So you can start using Yager right away. And if it turns out that later on I say, hey, uh, in one of the future videos, hey, better if you use this, it's no problem at all because you can just switch OpenTelemetry to go from Yager to somewhere else. Almost no effort involved, so you cannot make a mistake. Use Yager right away and let me know in the comments whether you would like me to explore alternative solutions for visualization and collection of traces. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Cheers.